Hello and welcome to the Fun Astrology video version of the podcast. Thomas Miller, thank you so much for joining us. Look at these incredible surroundings. This is what we get to enjoy all week. We're out of the van, we're in Asheville, house sitting in a beautiful part of town and a beautiful home with great energy too, by the way. So this is really fun. I'm excited to be here. Let's take a look at today's chart bring you up to speed on a couple of things. First of all, yesterday we had a sign change. Mercury entered Taurus, so today we're at one degree. And that changes things significantly, actually. As I was talking about, the structure of the chart literally shifts whenever you have something change like that because when you're doing horary astrology and you ask a particular question, now, all of a sudden, for those axes that are governed by Mercury in Horary, it's in a completely different sign, which changes a lot of structure in the chart. So the whole feel of the chart, if you will, is different now than it was. So in a subtle way, but I'm just saying to catch that when these planets change signs, it's more than just, oh, now Mercury is in is in Taurus. There's a lot more complexion to the chart that internally that shifts as well. But here's the big deal today. So the nodes of the moon, there's the south node in Scorpio, north node in Taurus. So the moon, and I'm setting this up to 7.05 this evening, because the moon is at a bend to the nodes, and so is Saturn. All right, big old square. Now, remember, when we're calculating this, the way you do it is that you start at the north node and you go to the first bend. That's the, that is the south bend planet. And then you keep going, and this is the north bend planet. So, the, so Saturn down here is basically in that more internal processing with the nodes. Now, here's what I promised on the audio podcast is this other thing that uh, Stephanie, who does the medical astrology that we've been doing, and she's coming back. Her birthday was yesterday. They had mold in their home of, on top of everything else. Then they have mold. So they're working on it, but bless their hearts, just giving a lot of space there. But she and I were talking about this the other day, and this is a different type of chart. Notice, instead of saying tropical, now it says draconic or draconic. So... What this does, really simply, so this is on the outer side, the transits we were just looking at are in the inner. The outer chart now is aligned to the north node at zero degrees Aries. So every draconic chart that there is in the world has zero north node Aries, zero south node Libra. So obviously we're not as concerned about the nodes themselves because for everybody it would be the same, just like it is today. But what we do care about is the structure or the way that it orients the chart as a result. And basically, without going into the details of it, because we're orienting to the main component of showing our soul's path in the chart then what this realignment does is it adjusts the natal chart to the soul path. So you can read it not only where we're going, but also, and particularly, related to our natal chart, what kind of energy did we bring in with us? So today, as we're looking at this bending of the nodes, let's circle up here Saturn again, right? This is really the primary focus. Saturn is the ruler of Aquarius, the ancient ruler. And look at all the draconian energy is in Aquarius, the sun, the moon. And you pay more attention in this interpretation to the sun, moon, and rising. So we have those three, and then we have the rising sign ruler, Venus, in draconic, is in Capricorn. So... What I thought was significant from this is that if we take this symbolism, it's really cool and quite interesting that all of a sudden we have these two sides of 
Aquarius that have been on display over the last, well, since the end of February when the Ukraine situation began, is we have the conflict that mostly came from these two hombres right here. And there's the, you know, when we, when we think about Capricorn and everything that's happening in Capricorn, Pluto is dancing now over this Aquarian line, 28 degrees it is, and it's like the Capricornian old structures, postcard now represented by Vladimir Putin and old Russia, is trying to hang on, trying to regain ground, trying to not slip away. I mean, it's just incredible how vivid this is along with the chart. And yet we know that that Aquarian Uranus side is rebellious and it's innovative and it's progressive and it's where we're going. And right now we've seen because of when this conflict started, you remember Venus was back in Aquarius, that we're seeing the whole world basically coming to the support and the love and the concern as best we all can without starting World War III, the Ukraine people, people of Ukraine. So just a very interesting symbolism, especially now that the draconic puts all this energy right on top of Aquarius, that we can think in our own lives, that we can look at this and we can say, what is it in my life that might be old and stodgy and hanging on? And what could be a replacement for that? And one of the things, and I mentioned this in the audio podcast, that I'm personally working on is the perspective of not seeing up in everything. So we've been circulating this concept of what if up in our Sunday night healing convergence groups. That's on our Facebook page. That's Subconscious Mind Mastery and Fun Astrology podcast listeners on Facebook. We have a great group of people in there. It's all positive conversation. We keep it that way, and the people there flow that way. And on Sunday nights at 8 p.m., we do this healing convergence. And it's just a ton of fun, and we'd love to have you stop by. But we've been talking about this concept of what if up? What if everything worked out to the best? What if everything just turned out okay in the end? And that's how we have to think about this chart now as well. Not that there won't be bumps along the way. Not that there might not be challenges. Some of them significant. But just to think that at the end of the day, however it is, it's all going to be okay. And even if it's what I'm building into my own soul and my own soul path for my next lap around, that maybe I'm teeing something up for better days ahead, even if it's beyond this lifetime. I mean, you can really stretch your imagination with this concept. So that's what I'm working on personally, but you could think of something that would serve you and that would work well for you in your life and start to think about what can I let go of that's trying to hang on? Wouldn't we all like to just go to Vladimir Putin and all that Russian army and just wipe it out? Well, you can in your life. Nobody's going to shoot back. Just wipe it out. Get rid of it. Go, ooh, and bring in the new. Like, what would we like to see replace this? Love, peace. Harmony, those are the things to think on. This is a priceless picture. I hope it makes sense. I hope you see it clearly, and I hope that you'll spend some time working it into your life as I'm going to be with mine. Thank you so much for watching. See you back tomorrow from these beautiful surroundings in Asheville, North Carolina.